So now in this video, we're going to be using this transistor, the 2N3906. So the writing's a little rough, but hopefully you can still read that. And so flat edge is here. The uh, left pin there is the emitter. Middle pin is the base, and right pin is the collector. And so you can see the first two uh, number and letters are 2 and N. And I find that all the uh, bipolar junction transistors that start with 2N have this same pin layout. So now, we're going to wire the uh, PNP transistor here as a constant current source and so the uh, emitter we're gonna put up so we're gonna put the flat side to the left middle pin the base we're gonna put to this jumper and the collector for now is where this uh, resistor is here so we are actually wiring it the same as we did in the NPN bipolar junction transistor video which was the complementary uh, transistor of uh, this one except for the NPN form so we use the 2N3904 for that video we're using the 2N3906 so it's turning the other way its collector is up here and uh, with the NPN transistor I had it down there so we're gonna take this one kilo ohm resistor and move it to the emitter up there but you notice it was at the negative rail there for the NPN transistor it's gonna go to the positive rail for the PNP transistor so polarities are opposite you can make any circuit with a PNP transistor that you made with the NPN transistor but polarities are opposite and so we're gonna set our voltage so the resistor will set the current but it needs a voltage across it to set that uh, current so the voltage that is across it and its resistance will set the current we'll look at that uh, coming up so again I had this set up for a while there these two were uh, connected directly together to set a voltage but then I used a diode to adjust that voltage. We'll look at that again in this video. But in any case, the Zener diode, which sets a voltage across it, as long as there's a higher voltage trying to be across it, it will pass current as needed to hold a voltage. So this is an 8.2 volt Zener diode that we used in the other video. It went to the negative rail for the PNP transistor, or the NPN transistor, I mean. So we're going to move it. And it's got to be reverse bias but we're going to put it to the positive rail right there now you can see it's going directly to the jumper that goes to the base of the transistor and now we need to complete a current path right there with uh, the resistor right there and so that is mostly it right there it's that simple and we need a load though it's it's open right now so it's not going to work perfectly there's no voltage being applied right now i have to hit the uh, power button for the uh, power supply to power the rails there and first i'm going to take this jumper and this is a nice thing about the pnp transistor for this circuit is that the load has the uh, current being set on the more positive side of the uh, power supply so the rest of the load goes directly to ground which is what you are used to when you have a load you're used to the load going to the negative rail and so that's one reason why this would be nicer than an NPN transistor version so in any case there you can see we have the power supply providing about 8 milliamps of current and we can uh, we will measure that with the meter later so that's the entire circuit that's not just the load but first we're gonna set the meter to measure voltage and look at the voltage across the uh, resistor here. So as I said, it's the voltage across this resistor and its resistance that sets the current. So you can see about 7.3 uh, volts right there. And so we have right here across this uh, Zener diode right now about 8 volts. And that goes to the base of the transistor and then to the uh, emitter there we're losing about 0.7 volts right there that ends up across the resistor and so that's why it is a little bit lower now we can yank this jumper here right now and we will set this to uh, measure milliamps of current and unfortunately my ground jumper is over there so we will measure the current going through here and it's probably going to be similar to uh, that one there once we get a connection probably a little bit lower but there you can see we got about 7.35 milliamps so that's because there's about 7.3 volts across a 1 kilo ohm resistor 
If it was a 500 ohm resistor, we would get twice as much current because it would be half the resistance. If we double the resistance, we would get half of the uh, current. But that would make for a lot longer video, so I'm not going to do that. So in any case, we can also add more of a load, an LED here, and we will get probably exactly the same current, except for we're not dealing with much voltage at the rail. And uh, there you can see 7.33. We're we only have the meter set to output 10 volts and there we go and so it is dependent on the power supply voltage too right there and you may notice this LED is a little dimmer that's just because it uh, got abused at some point probably I probably put too much current but there you can see a lot less current is going through the two let's yank that one if you use brand new LEDs, they'll all, they'll all be the same brightness. They're all from the same kit and everything, but some of these I, I abused. But you can see it's lower current because we have too much demand for 10 volts. So we are going to adjust this to uh, 14 volts at the uh, rail there. You can also look at the voltage it's applying to the rails, at least uh, where the probes start. And now we'll measure current and we'll find that it is the 7.3 and a little bit more right there and the total circuits using about 12 milliamps and uh, we can bypass the two LEDs and you can see 7.4 right there so it is holding steady now I really like that about 8.2 volts so it's actually doing about 8 volts because uh, a low enough amount of current is uh, going through here. If we use a lower value resistor, more current would be going, a little more voltage would build up. But in any case, I want 8 volts for whatever reason. So I'm going to turn the output of the power supply off. That's what the power button does right there. And so what I'm going to do, and I did this with the NPN version too, I'm going to take the resistor here, or no, the resistor has to stay where it is. I'm going to take the uh, Zener diode here and move it up one row, one row away from there. And now I'm going to forward bias a rectifier diode. So this is reverse bias. It's set in the direction where it's harder for it to conduct. I want the rectifier diode where it will conduct easily. So I'm going to forward bias it. The anode up here connected to the Zener diode to the positive rail. Cathode heads towards the negative rail. That's the uh, direction that it conducts more easy. And uh, now we will zoom back and first off I'm going to turn the power on and we will measure voltage. It's best to get the meter off of milliamps as quick as possible uh, because it's easy to accidentally try to measure a voltage of say a power supply. This one's limiting current to 20 milliamps but when you go to measure the voltage if it's set to measure current the power supply might put more current through the meter than the meter is designed for. But in any case, now we're going to look at the voltage across and it's in relationship to the to the positive rail there. And uh, we got 7.38 for some reason. So that is lower than I expected. Let's, uh, oh, we don't have that jumper there. We need the voltages get thrown off if you don't have the current flowing from, in this case, emitter to collector. So we're going to complete the uh, circuit with the load there, right there. And as you study these circuits, uh, these things become more obvious when you, you're building them. And so it's good to practice with these simple circuits. That's one reason why I leave my mistakes in the videos. But in any case, here we go. And usually I figure them out in the time that you see in the video. So we have now the uh, Zener voltage plus this diode voltage. So now it's uh, almost 8.8 .8, what we expect. Now we're going to go across the resistor there which again that's what sets the current because it's a one kilo ohm resistor for each fold across it we'll have one milliamp of current and there you can see 8.03 so basically 8 volts across this one kilo ohm resistor so we can feel really confident even if we add another LED in series that we're gonna have 8 milliamps of current going through these once uh, the currents also going through the meter so there's with the uh, three of them, two of them, two of the LEDs, 
one of the LEDs. You can see it's pretty much spot on, exactly the same amount of current. And now we are just directly to the collector right there. And so it's a constant current source, even as the load changes. And we set it with a Zener diode. And as we saw with the Zener diode, a big load causes a problem. But we just saw about 8 milliamps of current. We're going to yank the uh, three LEDs really quick. And I'm going to go back to having the meter output 10 volts right there. And that's the current going through the, uh, the Zener and uh, uh, whatnot. So that's uh, topics for other videos. But in any case, there we go. And with uh, 10 volts, we're going to take the uh, current measurement. We should see that it is still about uh, 8 milliamps of current. Pretty much spot on. Probably about 809. I need that jumper there again. And uh, no, I completed it. So it's the lower voltage. That's what it is. So there's less voltage build up across the uh, Zener diode. And so it's uh, dropping the voltage a little bit. But there you can see it's pretty much still spot on 8 volts, even though it's slightly lower because of a lower voltage. So that's uh, 7.98 uh, there. And so the more current you run through the Zener diode because it has a higher voltage power supply, it will get a little bit more of a voltage build up across it. You'll have a little bit higher voltage, but there you can see it's not a whole lot when we change in this case 4 volts right there. But in any case, that's really about it for the circuit. It is fairly straightforward. Again, we took the Zener voltage and added a rectifier diode voltage. So you can take different semiconductors and the voltage that they block. We're going to yank out uh, that Zener right now and then grab another one. So this is either a 5.6 or a 5.1 volt Zener diode and we will put that there. We can measure it directly as I said before as long as current's going through the uh, transistor. Without it you need that current path there to build up the uh, voltage at uh, the base. Without this flowing, the base gives everything it wants headed towards the uh, positive rail and it drops down the voltage. But in any case, make sure this is at uh, voltage and we're going to measure across first the Zener diode. Try not to short circuit anything. So this is the 5.6 volt Zener diode. It says 5.8 seems to be a uh, slightly higher. Now we're going to add the voltage of the rectifier down about 0.7 volts. There you can see it's it's about 0.7 volts higher in that range right there. And then so that will give us this voltage minus about 0.7. So we can expect about 5.8 approximately across this resistor there. And uh, there we go. It's it's a little higher for some reason. So we expect about 6 milliamps of current going through here. Going from a collector to ground. So put that there. And there you can see pretty much uh, spot on 6 milliamps of current. So we can control the current under uh, varying loads. And with the power supply voltage changing, the Zener voltage will adapt to that. It's going to hold steady as well the rectifier diode even as the power supply voltage is changing. So a few videos ago I used a trim pot. The trim pot depends on the rail voltage and the position. So halfway you'll get half the rail voltage. So as the rail voltage changes this will output will change. You increase the rail voltage even if you hold this at halfway the output's going to increase. Decrease the rail voltage and the output's going to decrease. You don't have that problem other than a small amount of voltage change due to uh, differing current going through the Zener. But for the most part, it's holding pretty true. And uh, so you can pretty much rely on that voltage, even with uh, the rail voltage changing. So hope that all made sense. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.